Please be seated. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. This is the case of Lewis versus Palmer. Thank you, Jerome. Good day, everyone. Good day. Ms. Lewis, you are devastated that after being daddy's little girl, you are now forced to drag your father to court to prove that you are his biological daughter. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Palmer, you appear in court believing there is no way you are Ms. Lewis's father and claim you've always known you are not her dad. Yes, Your Honor. So, Ms. Lewis, how did you first hear from Mr. Palmer that he wasn't your biological father? By him. Explain. He... How did that happen? Um, we were at his place of business going about our day one day. And how old were you? I believe I was about 13. Okay. Take me back to that day. I know it's difficult. Um, he brought all of us together and said he wanted to tell us something and he wanted me to know that I wasn't his daughter. And he said that in front of other siblings? Yes, yes, Your Honor. How were you processing this at 13 years old? I didn't. He took me around to talk with my grandmother. She basically was sort of like saying that he, he was a little unsure, but she felt like I was his daughter. So your grandmother tried to reassure you? Yes. The man you believe to be your biological father just basically came out and said one day, I'm not your father. Yes, Your Honor. You're about 13 years old. And up until this point, you were daddy's little girl. Yes. We started going to visit him every summer up until the one summer when uh, I was told that he wasn't my dad. We had about maybe two or three summers before he said it. That you um, would spend together? Yes. And, and do things daddies and daughters do and hanging out with your dad? Mm -hmm. And you had no idea? No. Mr. Palmer, do you remember this day that she says you gathered everybody up? Yes, Your Honor. Why would you gather everybody up and tell her she's not your biological daughter? Because I knew all the time she wasn't my daughter, and I just thought it was just time to tell her. When you say you knew all the time... Yes, ma'am. So you were just raising her... Why? To be kind? I had another daughter by her mother, and so I, I wouldn't do anything for my other daughter that I wouldn't do for her. I was a stand-up kind of a father. So what was the nature of your relationship with her mother? Well, we was... Inseparable at first, we was gonna get married, but all my friends were saying I'm a fool that I'm, for, for me to think that Margaret Ann was my daughter, that she was going with another guy. She had another friend. He, she told me that she was, she wanted to go see her mother, which was in, supposedly uh, had been in a coma and on, dying, and she wanted to go see her. Mr. Palmer wouldn't take her. So she had her other friend take her, but she said at that time, she was already pregnant with me. She was, I think she was like four months. I drove by there one day and I saw her out there. He had a 59 Ford, pink and white. I never will forget that. I was in love with her. What happened with the Ford, the car? What, what you said you were... That was a boyfriend's car. That was the boyfriend's car? It was in the drive. Was she yeah. in the car when you saw her? Yes, ma'am. What did uh, you see? She laid down, her leg was sticking out the side of the car. Oh. She said that, that that wasn't true. So your mother has denied that to you? Yes. My mother said she never... It was never nobody else. Him only. I'm, I'm starting to understand. What you're saying, Mr. Palmer, you saw her with this old friend, and it was a man. Yes, ma'am. But what Ms. Lewis is saying is her mother admitted to that, that I did ask this man to take me because I wanted to go see my mother because she was dying, but I was already pregnant with Ms. Lewis, with Margaret, before that happened. But what you thought in that moment was she was sleeping with this other gentleman as well. Yes, Your Honor. And I can see how deeply this hurts you. Yeah, because I, as I told him, when he told me that he wasn't my dad, I said, well, if I'm not your daughter, why, why, why would you continue to raise me? as yours, because my mom didn't ask you to. She didn't ask you for any, anything. We reached out, me and my sister reached out to him. Well, that's what I'm curious about as well. So at this point where you have this bomb dropped on you at 13 years old, and you're told that he's not your biological father, where does it go from there? When he told me, I didn't come back. I didn't come back for about four years, three or four years. I think when I came back, I was, what, 17? When I came back? Bed, yeah, okay. So for three or four summers, you just wouldn't go back? No, ma'am. To the farm, because you remember him saying, you're not my child. Mm-hmm. And even though your grandmother tried to reassure you, in your heart, 
What did you feel? You felt rejected. Yes. But yes, did I... you still feel like he was your biological father? Yes, I did. I look just like him. I'm, I'm, to me, I'm his twin. Those ears, that nose, that chin. My grandmother told me there's no other way. When she seen him, she seen my mother. And not to... Even when I stayed away, my, mom, my grandmother, she would call and she called me a couple of times and spoke with me and told me to, to come back. Mr. Palmer, all these years when Ms. Lewis didn't show up, year after year after year, how did you feel about that? It didn't bother me because I knew all the time she wasn't my daughter. <laughs> all right, that was honest. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. This hurts Miss Lewis very much, as you can see. Your denial of her. You seem very matter-of-fact about it. Why are you so sure? If you were with her mother, and you admit that, you were very much in love with this woman. I was in service woman. at the time, Your Honor. You were in the service at the time? There's no way I could have... To me, I couldn't... I couldn't get the timing together. So you're talking... Oh, the timing. So you're talking about the window of time that Ms. Lewis would have been conceived. Yes, ma'am. You don't feel it adds up. That's right, Your Honor. Did you bring any proof of that? Over here, Your Honor, right here. I'd like to see it. From the time I left for war in May 1968, let me follow along with you. So this is your timeline. You say you left to go to war. In May of 68. M May of 68. Let me first say thank you for your service. Then you say you returned nine or ten months later. And then Ms. Lewis was born September 6, 1969. Yes. Yeah, I was drafted to Vietnam in May of 68. And she was born... So what you're saying is, is the way that adds up that Ms. Lewis would have had to have been conceived in November of 1968, and that was when you were away. Yes, ma'am. All right, so thank you so much, sir. You can step back to the podium. So, Ms. Lewis, is September 6, 1969 your birthday? Yes, Your Honor. It is, in fact, your birthday. Yes, Your Honor. And so when Mr. Palmer outlines this chain of events, he, his, his conclusion is that you would have had to been conceived sometime in November of 1968. Mm -hmm. He says he was away at war. What did you hear concerning these events? I heard that he was home. He was having a relationship with someone else. Kind of sort of the reason why my mom was told that, she, that he wasn't my father. Oh, you were told that he had gotten into a relationship with someone else mm -hmm. and that was another reason why the denial of you began. It's yes, because he had moved on yes, to another relationship. Yes, Do you remember this, Mr. Palmer? Yes, Your Honor. You did. The plot thickens. <laughs> <laughs> so after the Ford incident, when you felt like Ms. Lewis's mother had cheated on you, the relationship ended and you moved on with someone else. Yes, Your Honor. But you still maintain that you were away at war when Ms. Lewis was conceived. Well, I calculated it up. I was away. All right. I'd like to hear from your witness, please, Ms. Lewis. Will you stand? Yes, sir. Please step over to the podium, sir. State your name for the court. Jesse Williams. Mr. Williams, how are you related to Ms. Lewis? Her brother. You are her brother? Yes, yes ma'am. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Do you believe Mr. Palmer is... Ms. Lewis's biological father. Yes, ma'am, I do. I was there. I was there when he told her that he was not her father, but I believe that... Oh, you were, you were there on that day at the farm? Yes, ma'am, I was. Yes, Your Honor. So, Mr. Palmer is your father. Yes, He's Your, your Honor. biological father. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Palmer, you do not dispute that you are Mr. Williams' biological father. No, I don't, Your Honor. You don't. He's saying that he was not there, but I feel like he was because I have another si sibling that was born around the same time she was born. You do? Yes, Your Honor. How far apart are this sibling and Ms. Lewis in terms of birth? We're eight days apart. I was born okay. September the 6th, 1969. My brother was born September 14th, 1969. So if he was here to conceive him, he was here to conceive, conceive me. her. In my court folder, I do in fact have a birth certificate 
for another sibling, born the 14th day of September, 1969. Yes, Your Honor. Which would just be eight days after your birth. Yes, Your Honor. And it says the father is Mr. and Mrs. Jesse Palmer. That was his wife, Your Honor. Mr. Palmer? Yes, Your Honor. I've got a birth certificate in the court record here for another child of yours born to you and your wife, born September 14th, 1969, just eight days after when Ms. Lewis was born. That's right, Your Honor. So if you were there to conceive this child, why wouldn't you be there to conceive that child? I probably got home on a leave or something like that. Uh, I left on leave. <laughs> I don't know exactly. I can't remember exactly how it was, but... Uh... So they're born eight days apart. If you conceive that child and you don't dispute it, why are you disputing that you could have conceived along with her mother, Ms. Lewis? Because we didn't have no relationship at the time. Oh, you were saying that you were not in a relationship and you were not having sex or sleeping with or intimate with Ms. Lu Ms. Lewis's mom during that window of time. That's right, Your Honor. He know he's my father. I know he's my father. You've lived your entire life with him basically denying you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Your Honor. What has he missed? Um, he missed out on a whole lot. He missed out on... <laughs> My graduations, um, I wanted my daddy to walk me down the aisle when I got married. He didn't, you, he wasn't there for that. Um, I have five girls and one son. And that one son I had, I would have loved for my dad to be there. And he wasn't there. But I know this turnout is gonna be, I'm his child. And, and all I wanna say to him, if I may, is that once we get this, can I please not hear that no more? Yeah. Please. Because I've always looked at you as my daddy. No matter, even when you told me you wasn't my daddy. You my daddy. Yeah, it's, okay. it's okay. How has it affected the children? They don't have a relationship with the man you believe is their grandfather. Right. We've just became into a relationship these last four, five years because I moved home, back home. Okay. And, I, and, and that, I did that because my dad was sick and I wanted, I came back and I wanted to make sure my kids knew who he was and he knew who they was because we not promised tomorrow. And he's getting older and I'm getting older. So I wanted them to know who their grandfather was. Even though he says that, you know, I'm, I wasn't his child, I still wanted them to know. So Mr. Palmer, when you hear this testimony and we've uncovered the fact that you do have another child that's born during the same window of time, one week after Ms. Lewis. Does it change your belief at all? No, I know what I know. And uh, I know I wasn't having no relationship with her mother at the time. Those eight days so before. you're still 100% certain that you are not Ms. Lewis's biological father? Yes, Your Honor. All right. I think the only way we're going to really get the answers we need is to have the results. Jerome, I'm ready. There you go. Thank you. You're welcome. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. Do you want to watch Paternity Court on TV? Go to paternitycourt.tv to find your local listings. In the case of Lewis versus Palmer, mm -hmm. When it comes to 46-year-old Margaret Lewis, it has been determined by this court, Mr. Palmer, you are her father. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Now, don't you say that to me no more. <laughs> we got them papers. <laughs> okay. We needed that. Yes, we did. <laughs> In your honor, if I may, I, I really believe this came from and stemmed from him not knowing who his father is. And he took it out on me. 
because I, I was on my daddy because I hadn't seen my daddy, I didn't know who my daddy was. And I believe I put so much pressure on him, it brought him to, to this place. I'm very happy that I could give you the news that you wanted and the clarity, Mr. Palmer, that you needed. At the end of the day, it's about so much more than that. And I mm -hmm. think that's what your daughter so eloquently stated. It's about breaking generational curses. You didn't know your father or have a relationship. And then that curse was passed down to this young lady. And it almost got passed down again to another generation, her children, because they almost didn't have a relationship with you. But for her unconditional love, even through your denial, you wouldn't have known those grandchildren. Mm -hmm. So I think this is a beautiful day for so many reasons, because you get the validation you need, but more importantly, you get the opportunity to break a curse so that those children not only know their father, they know their grandfather. Yeah. Yeah. This courtroom's all about family, and I can see how important this moment is for you, Ms. Lewis. <laughs> it is. And we are so very happy we could be here to share it with you. Court is adjourned. <laughs>